Hi there. Today we are going to talk about the PostgreSQL network filter for Envoy Proxy. I'm Fabrizio. I'm working in IT for 25 years. I'm a Postgres developer at Ongres. It's a company that provides professional services uh, on Postgres and develop related tools. My friend Alvaro will talk more about uh, Ongres <laughs> very soon. I'm a PostgreSQL contributor and a Brazilian community leader. Okay, hello everybody. I'm Alvaro or Alvaro. I'm the founder of Ongres. This company means on Postgres. We do work on R&D on Postgres. We provide professional services. Uh, that's as part of the background. And I'm frequently found on Postgres conference on other database or even Java programming conference sometimes. Uh, and I, I also like to work on the Postgres community and in general, uh, I also founded a Postgres nonprofit, the foundation in Spain, Fundación Postgres SQL, uh, which is devoted to promote Postgres all around the world. Uh, also just compulsory curriculum. I'm also an Amazon data hero. And you can find me on Twitter uh, on or my personal website uh, for any question after this talk. So let's look about uh, talk about today about how we could enhance uh, what is Postgres observability. Let, let's try to analyze where it comes from, how it works, and if there's anything we can do to make it better. So basically, Postgres monitoring, uh, because we'll, we'll keep logs and traces for pos potentially other talks. Let's focus on, on monitoring. And Postgres monitoring is something that is actually not a solution that is integrated in core. Uh, you normally need to use external tools to, uh, to make queries to Postgres and to get some, some information. The good news is that Postgres provides a, a quite a good wealth of information that you can query with SQL. So what is called the Postgres catalog, which includes tables and views, which you can query, provide a lot of information related to how the database is operating. So this is very good for information and we can, we can make queries to gather all this monitoring data. The problem is that the volume of queries that we need to uh, in, sometimes incur with Postgres for getting all this monitoring information may or may not be that small. Uh, especially if let's say that uh, we're doing a multi-tenant database where we have a lot of databases, we might want all these databases to be monitored independently. And that means that basically we may need to multiply all the queries for monitoring across all the database. Then it leads to hundreds or even thousands of queries per monitoring cycle. Then if we want to like a fine grain resolution, like one second, then we're imposing some non, not, not negligible load on the database. Also, sometimes to monitor, we need to ex install additional extensions like pgstatstatements or pgstatmonitor. These extensions require a restart of the database. And restart means downtime. This is sometimes not even uh, uh, acceptable on many environments. And they also may require separate configuration or external binaries, agents. So this leads to complexity. So is there any way in which we can do this better? So let's think about how the Postgres protocol works, the, what is called the front-end, back-end protocol. This Postgres protocol is a layer 70 CP protocol. This means that it's not operating at the TCP layer, it's application layer. Um, it's, it's very well documented, which is, is an advantage. You can see here a drawing of what is a sequence of potential uh, messages that flows from client to server to perform a query. Um, this protocol is very well structured. There's no kind of catch-all or generic message for, for, for many things, like, for example, MongoDB protocol. Uh, which basically everything is run command and, and you wrap er almost everything right now under it. Here, there's a specific message for, for very specific actions. There's dozens of different messages and they're all very specific and very well defined. This makes it easy to, to decode and understand the protocol very well. And it's also very stable. The current version called version three has been uh, operating uh, since Postgres 7.4, which is circa 2003. So it's been 18 years and 10 years uh, running for, with the same protocol with no changes. And this protocol is very widespread. It's obviously implemented in all drivers and, and all tools that access Postgres. And not only is used by Postgres, it's also used by other databases that have settled on using the Postgres write protocol to enhance compatibility with, again, tools and drivers. They don't need to write their own. And they have just implemented the Postgres protocol. Databases like Yugibyte or CockroachDB, um, Crate.io, or even the most recent noise page and experimental uh, project from the Carnegie Mellon University. 
all these implemented Postgres protocol, obviously also Postgres derivatives, they also benefit from this protocol. So what if we could, by studying this protocol, by, by uh, inferring some data from this protocol, we could provide observability to Postgres. This would benefit this whole ecosystem at once. So let's look at this, how the protocol works. How, what is the architecture? Well, it's, it's pretty simple, right? We have, we have a client, uh, we have a Postgres server and they connect and then the message flows that connects between them is the Postgres wire protocol, this front end back end protocol that I was mentioning before. Now, what if we would intercept this protocol, set up a middle box, a middleware layer uh, where we, we may intercept this protocol and, and proxy it. So in this case, what we would be looking at is, a, is an intermediate layer here between this Postgres client and the Postgres server where the, well, the protocol is intercepted and forwarded exactly the same as, as it came before. So basically a proxy. Now, if this proxy just passes the TCP, the TCP uh, protocol, there will be no change. This, this is totally transparent to the client. But if we use this proxy, this decoder box, to actually obtain metrics from this traffic and send them to an external location for, uh, for, for storing and, and visualizing and processing all these metrics, then we've got uh, observability basically for free. We're just decoding the protocol transparently to the server. So, to summarize the advantages of exposing this observability to obtain this metrics via this process of proxying the traffic and decoding it are basically that we're replacing a pool model uh, with, uh, sorry, we're replacing a pool model where the monitoring agent is, is gonna be uh, querying the database to push model. As soon as we've got metrics, we'll push them out and, and we'll have basically real time for these metrics and less overhead. But especially on the database side, there is zero impact. It is 100% transparent. And this means that there's no performance impact whatsoever. And there's also no configuration required. There's no restarts required. There's no agents. There's no uh, restarts, no downtime. So this is very beneficial for the database. It's a zero impact measure on the database. Obviously, this can also, on certain environments, such as Kubernetes, this can be deployed as a sidecar. Uh, we can even inject on, on some uh, instance, uh, instances uh, the sidecar and then transparently proxy the traffic and transparently provide all these metrics without disrupting at all the existing uh, clients and servers. The side effect of this is that because this has zero impact, we may leverage this to actually increase the volume of metrics we are providing. Sometimes we need to control, you know, putting on a DBA, Postgres DBA hot. Sometimes we, you know, we can need to put a limit and say, no, we, we cannot get all these metrics or this volume or this resolution because we're going to overwhelm the database and we cannot disrupt the traffic. Um, however, if we're providing this observability at this proxy layer, we can actually, uh, you know, as long as we don't obviously saturate the proxy either, but this will be impact free for the database. So we can increase the volume of metrics uh, or the resolution that we're capturing in these metrics. And obviously this also opens the door to new functionality that will be discussed at the end of the talk as future research and future opportunities for leveraging this layer. So uh, for this functionality that uh, Alvaro mentioned, the proxy box, let's introduce Envoy Proxy. Envoy Proxy uh, is a high performance C++ distributed proxy designed to single services and applications. And uh, it was built by learnings uh, so of solutions such as Nginx, HA proxy, hardware load balances, and cloud load balances. And Envoy runs alongside every application and abstracts the network by providing common features in a platform agnostic manner. It's a middleware, Envoy proxy is a, it's a middleware between Postgres, between client application, the server application, as we can see here on this uh, slide. And the power of uh, Envoy, the extensibility, uh, we have the, the, the ability to have a TCP proxy. So to connect uh, the client to Postgres, uh, Envoy just needs an extension, a TCP proxy filter to make the, to create a, a connection, a TCP level connection between 
the application and the, the, the server, uh, your application and the PostgreSQL. And the application takes advantage of Envoy's extensive backend features. So on Envoy, we have load balance, health checking, outlier detection, and so on. And, the, and also, uh, the statistics are produced, but are grossed at TCP level. Uh, for example, number of TCP connections, number of bytes passed over TCP session, number of uh, connection errors, and so on. Access logs also limited by TCP, TCP sessions. And uh, the connection model uh, for PostgreSQL is the same because the extensibility of Envoy, we have the ability to change filters. Uh, it means we can create a pipeline of extensions, a pipeline of filters to do something uh, over the TCP connection. And uh, the PostgreSQL filter introduced in Envoy uh, understand the PostgreSQL wire protocol. Or uh, I mean, the, it understands the um, bits and bytes, uh, the communication from client to server at the TCP 7 layer, the TCP protocol, to expose some metrics and do some tests uh, over the, the TCP connections. And also, uh, the architecture is so extensible that we can produce some metadata about the traffic uh, passing over the TCP connection uh, using PostgreSQL filter. I mean, we use a, a small SQL parser to parse the SQL uh, messages from client to server and produce some metadata to pass over to another filter, maybe to airbag or whole access, uh, whole based access uh, control to control, to grant or revoke some usage of some uh, objects like, ah, this user can use this uh, table, can write in this table and so on. And this is uh, another feature introduced in this network filter for um, Envoy proxy. So, how it all started? Uh, it's to make the history, the long history short. Actually, if you see on the issues on the Envoy development, and on the issues on GitHub, we all have other uh, issues related to why we don't have, we don't uh, have a network filter for PostgreSQL yet. And uh, in November uh, 2019, uh, Alvaro created an issue with a complex, uh, complete background context and why we need this and how uh, we, we, we will have in, uh, more information, how we can improve the observability over PostgreSQL connections. So we did an effort uh, a really community effort because we made we had we had contributions from uh, several companies like Tetrity, uh, from Envoy maintainers, of course, uh, from Ongres. Uh, we did a lot of uh, work uh, to make this happen. And uh, the first POC uh, we sent to we sent to community some time ago. In the next slide, we will see the timeline. Uh, in a really short time, we got this measure to core, and now we have the ability to expose the metrics about PostgreSQL connections without a pooling mode on uh, Postgres backend like Alvaro said. So it led, us, led to 10 issues in new functionality, uh, new, um, new features being implemented in several other ways. And of course, uh, we need help if someone wants to help us to improve more and more the network filter and uh, other areas of Envoy are, are very welcome to, to join us. And this is a small timeline on November 9th, uh, 2019, the, this issue was created. The first POC about network filter was 
on January 2020. On July 2020, we have the first version on release 1.15. Uh, after that, on last October, we had uh, release 1.16 uh, and was released a uh, filter metadata, the ability to produce uh, metadata from Postgres filter. And uh, we have a very uh, important case here that Alvaro will talk more uh, later. Uh, last release was 117 released uh, this month in January. Uh, we released on Envoy the Start TLS transported socket feature. This is very important to have a feature called SSL termination to a next version. We hope we can finish it <laughs> uh, to next version that will be released to, uh, on next March. But uh, this is the plan. Uh, and about the metrics uh, that currently are, are being supported. We group the metrics, uh, the, the, those metrics are counters, I mean metrics per second, and we have errors, messages, statement sessions, transactions, and we drill down um, the counters, uh, for example, the numbers of inserted uh, inserts, uh, statements, the number of updating statements, delete statements, other statements, and so on. So uh, I will do a quick demo uh, soon, and we will see this uh, running. And let's switch to demo. Here, I have four uh, consoles. On the top left, I have a PSQL console. I mean a PostgreSQL console. Here, I have the ability to run several statements uh, over PostgreSQL server. On the top uh, right, I'm doing a tail on PostgreSQL log just for statements. It's to, to, to see that we are, doing, we are not doing any pulling on Postgres site to grab metrics, to expose metrics. Uh, on the bottom left, I have a debug log for Envoy proxy, when we can see the decoder working, the coding messages for connection. And on the bottom right, you have all the metrics exposed by PostgreSQL network filter, uh, for Envoy Postgres network filter, for sure. Uh, let's, for example, create a small table and see what happens on the filter's perspective here. I, just to have some, exp some space. Let's create a table called customer with two columns. Here on Envoy uh, connection, uh, Envoy uh, logs, we can see the statements that front end, front end I mean the client send to server, and the response of server uh, of backend to client. And the metrics, we have sessions, how many sessions encrypted or unencrypted, how uh, many messages uh, was sent from backend to front end, from front end to, to backend. In Postgres terminology, the front end means the client and the backend means the server, just to, clar just to clarify. And here on the statements, we can see we have, we executed one statement and one statement other because the drill down statements we just have, we recognize, delete, insert, select, select and update, okay? And there are some parts error or parts. Here we, uh, we dis I disable the parser because uh, the currently SQL parser uh, embedded on Envoy is very, very poor, and I'm not using here to avoid some confusion. And let's see uh, other statement, uh, an insert, for example. It's the same on PostgreSQL. We don't have any pooling, grabbing metrics. Here, we increase a statements now the specific counter for insert was increased. The messages, the flow messages from client to server uh, are uh, 
get logged here. Of course, this is debug, it's a debug level. Please don't do the production. <laughs> we will produce a very large logs. Don't do that. And the, the, the select, it's the same. And all the messages are decoded, all the comments and the response messages from client to server and then from server to client. And here we have a select increase. So this is the, a very powerful feature because open the doors for a lot of incredible uh, ways to improve the observability. This is just the beginning. I will switch back to the slides. And uh, this is an example. There are on, on GitHub uh, a repository. Uh, there are some uh, Docker Compose with uh, several um, containers to have a, a complete example of usage of this network filter, of course, with Prometheus and Grafana. And here is the expected result of all the things that we, we talked until now. Here you have some examples for transactions per second, transactions per second, sorry, back reads and writes, front end and back end messages, number of statements drilling down to insert, select, update, uh, all DML uh, operations. And of course, number of section, sessions per second. All right, <clears throat> so this is what is available right now. Just, just go download Envoy 117, that's the latest version. You'll, you'll be able to use all this. Now let's look a little bit into the future. What is coming on Envoy 1.18, the next version, which is due on March this year. So what we are trying to achieve for Postgres filter for this version is to be able to uh, consider supporting Postgres SSL. Let me tell you briefly about Postgres SSL. First of all, this is not the classical TLS you're thinking of. Postgres SSL doesn't operate a level four of the OC layer, but rather at application level. So it's basically similar to what SMTPS does. Uh, it's basically you start uh, with a, a, an unencrypted connection, a, a request to upgrade the connection to SSL is performed, and then you switch to a, connect, a, a encrypted connection, similar to start TLS. So that's why this functionality will be leveraged, the start TLS functionality that was implemented on purpose with Envoy 1.17. Now, what is about SSL? SSL is obviously very desirable or a requirement of many environments, but SSL database connections are high. In general, connections are high, right? The SSL and connections to a database are high. I'm on top of this SSL and SSL data connections are quite high, right? So the obvious solution is, oh, no problem, we use a connection pooler. Uh, what is the most used connection pooler? One of the best connection poolers in Postgres, PD Bouncer. But PD Bouncer is single threaded. And so establishing SSL connections, even via PD Bouncer, that is expensive. And you can actually separate and bring totally down a PD Bouncer with a, with a not that high number of SSL connections. So you can basically be swamped by this. Also, turning off on, on SSL or rotating the certificates in Postgres requires a database restart, which leads to the downtime. So is there any way where we can uh, you know, solve all these problems? So the obvious answer is to offload SSL to Envoy, right? We have already in place the filter. We have start TLS support, so we can do that. And this obviously avoids the performance problems that I just mentioned from Postgres and PG Bouncer, but it also enhances our observability and monitoring capabilities because now we're able to, the, to also get the same metrics that Fabrizio was just pointing out before, but for the encrypted traffic too. Otherwise we would just, just pass it through. So um, that's, that's quite interesting. But even more important is that we can leverage here the management capabilities that Envoy has. Envoy allows for dynamic configuration via APIs. And so we can turn this configuration on SSL on, on or off, rotate the certificates without any database impact, without downtime. And we can even do that programmatically via the API. So this is coming to Postgres 1.18, uh, sorry, Envoy 1.18. Now, the resulting architecture is just an extension of the architecture we have shown before, where um, there's another filter change, as a chain, sorry, as Fabricio mentioned in Envoy, the filters can be chained. So here we'll have a change with the start TLS extension, which will decrypt the protocol, and then all the rest of the flow will be unencrypted 
to the TCP filter, which emits its own uh, basic metrics, and this phosphorus filter, which emits their own very specialized metrics. Uh, this is desirable, especially if you're running kind of in a sidecar environment where uh, you will uh, the clients will connect externally to the Envoy proxy, and then every everything else from Envoy to Postgres will happen on Unix domain sockets, where you can obviously be anchored. So the, the SSL demo is very quickly. We just switch back for the consoles that I showed before. Here I will create a encrypted connection to PostgreSQL. As you can see, the protocol TLS 1.3, the cipher, the bits, compression off. And here on the the metrics we can see now there are a special counter called terminated SSL. It means that this connection was encrypted between client, uh, this client is a PSQL console, and Envoy, but from Envoy to PostgreSQL it was unencrypted. So in this, um, using this, we can continue using the ability to expose the metrics to the code, the, raw, the wire protocol, exposing the metric, even for client connection, of encrypted client connections. This is under development. This is a work in progress, working, working progress, progress uh, issue. Uh, we hope we get it merged into Envoy very soon. And uh, this is a very simple example of offloading SSL on Envoy. OK, that was very cool. And just to close on this presentation, um, let us just uh, briefly mention uh, one use case and, uh, and some of the uh, feature of the Envoy Postgres plugin. So the first one is an open source software. We're also developing at Ongress and, and, the, and, and a wider community called Stackgress. You can go on stackgress.io and check it out. This is a platform for running Postgres on Kubernetes. And Envoy is used as exactly as I mentioned before, is a sidecar uh, to Postgres container. So it proxies, transparently proxies the traffic and delivers all these metrics that Fabrizio uh, just mentioned. They are exported to custom Grafana DOS dashboards that are shown in a web console that also comes included with this open source software. And basically this means that there's zero configuration, nothing for to do on the database, no impact, no configuration from the user. We're providing uh, well, uh, very rich metrics uh, from Postgres uh, uh, behavior gathered from the product. And uh, looking at a glimpse into the future of, of what is going to come into Envoy in the future versions, uh, on the next slide, we might see that there's uh, certain cases, uh, certain functionalities sorry, that are coming. First of all, the parser ESQL parser is included right now. It's going to be improved. Um, it's not able to parse 100% to parse of the statement. So we're going to get better parsing to also expose all the metrics and, as Fabricio mentioned, to feed the RBAC uh, potentially filter uh, to make more specific, more granular statistics on a per database because Postgres basically supports multiple databases within the same server. So we can provide per database statistics. Uh, in the future, we might add some really advanced functionality, like for example, query routing, and this could be based on the inspection of the queries that we're doing. This will all happen again, totally transparent to the Postgres database server. So we can create sharding, even sharding or routing or read, write, read only alternatives of the proxy layer. Uh, an operation that I'm quite interested in, which is the traffic draining. So we can uh, enable this to, to switch backends to perform failovers and all the operations. And finally, uh, the open telemetry integration. This is also very interesting for us for standardizing all these metrics. So basically, if you just want to check what's going on, join the community. Here you have the specifics about the, the Slack channel, uh, related issues. And uh, there's also some references that uh, are provided here in the slides for you. And that's, that's basically all. We're happy to take on any questions. And I hope you will enjoy and use the Postgres filter for Envoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.